Good afternoon and welcome back to the Imperial Hotel in Blackpool. It's the second semi-final in this year's World, Men's World Championship. Thank you ladies and gentlemen. If I could ask you all to turn off your mobile phones or put them on silent please. And uh, in case of a fire, we have the fire exits over there for those of you on the left hand side, a fire exit over there for those of you at the back here and some of you on the right hand side and there is also a fire exit through the door behind the screen. Thank you very much. This is a second semi-final of the men's individuals and I'd like to introduce you to the referee, Colin Friars. <laughs> we now bring on the two players, two rising stars in the game. First of all, I'd like to introduce Nigel Clark. And his opponent today, Michael Hope. Good luck, Michael. I hand you over to your referee, Colin Friars. So we'll see now. Lag for break in this best of 19 world semi-final. Wait for the balls to be set. Uh, referee Colin Fryers. Nigel Clark there looking on intently. <coughs> Waiting for his chance. It's going to be Nigel Clark breaking off in frame one. Joined once again in the commentary box by Peter Butterworth from Australia. Well, Peter, I don't think this is quite the semi-final, the second semi-final that people saw at the beginning of the week. No, definitely not. I think uh, there was such a build-up to the previous one. But look, I mean, they, these guys have played sensational ball to get this far, and uh, Michael's had some really big matches and a, a big comeback. And I think it was his last 32 match. Said uh, well, he had Carl come back at him and O'Donoghue and fended him off. So he's uh, yeah, both in terrific form. Yeah, this part of the draw contained Giuseppe D'Imperio. He was so unlucky to lose in last year's final. He went out in that last 32 to Partab Singh. Well, the odd frame, 8 7. A match that went on quite late on uh, last Thursday evening. Michael's taken out Phil Harrison 9-2, which is a pretty emphatic victory. Well, that was incredible. Was, I mean, he was, was a great was, player. Yeah, there was a buzz going around the room when that was happening because he just he, he just started. I think it was like one each, and then Michael just was reeling frame after frame after frame, and, and 
and not, nobody could quite believe what was happening. With the, and that's not any disrespect to Michael. You know, I mean, Phil Harrison has been the, t you know, won this title, and uh, one of the top players in the t in the country, and certainly on form, coming into this championship, he'd won tours two and three at the UK Tour. Wow. So he was absolutely flying from that point of view, but it uh, was a fantastic performance from Michael Hope. And he was obviously going to be looking to bring that momentum into this semi-final. And Nigel as well has taken out a uh, previous winner, Adam Davis. So uh, both have to be in scintillating form to, to get those victories. Yeah, certainly uh, fantastic performance from both these young men. Both actually from the same, roughly the same area of the country, Region 7. Nigel is playing out of Berkshire this year with uh, Giuseppe D'Imperio, who we talked about, and also Dylan Leary. And, um, Dylan Leary, who Michael took out in the last 16, I believe. Yeah, I was just looking at that. He's actually taken him out. Yeah, one of Nigel Clark's uh, teammates got taken out by Michael Hope. Dylan Leary, very good cueist. And uh, Michael plays out of Surrey. I'm sure he'll have a lot of people back home there supporting him this afternoon, watching this. And he's made fairly light work this first frame. Yeah, ideal start for him. Dry break from Nigel and uh, first look at him. And down goes the eight and Michael Pope takes the first frame in this best of 19 semi-final. So, frame two, Michael Oak to break off. Great performance in that first frame. Good dry break from Michael Clark. Big break there from uh, Michael Hope, but again, nothing down. And, uh, it'd be interesting to see, actually, I can't tell from that if he's using a break cue. I was talking to him in the practice room earlier on, and uh, he, was, he was using a break cue on the practice table just to see. Um, how he went on with it, and he wasn't sold on the idea completely. He said he'd had it all, all week with him, and he decided to have a try. It does look like he has got that break cue there with him on the left. It's just tucked up, so... Uh, Whether or not he used it, we're not 100% sure, but yeah. you know, he may see how it goes, and... Uh, oh, Oof. That's a very, very stiff arm first shot. Yeah, can only put that down to nerves there, and like you say, a little bit of stiffness in the arm. He's only had that break-off shot in frame one. Both, both under-21 champions, these boys. Yeah, yeah. Michael Hope um, took took the under-21 world crown in 2013. And, uh, and again, a little interesting fact that earlier on in that year, Nigel Clark was the under-21 European champion. And actually, in the same room they're in now, we held the European Championships here that year in Blackpool. And uh, Nigel Clark was the under-21 champion. So he's got happy memories of being out there in the room. Obviously... Completely different. It's not in a on a seven foot table in an arena with lots of other people still playing. You know, he's out there. The pressure of uh, you know the big table, the arena, and the biggest stage there is. Yeah, without a doubt. But uh, so he's certainly got some quality. It's just how he can handle this match. But I think his philosophy beforehand was just go out and enjoy it. You know, and, and almost like what will be will be sort of thing, which is uh, is no bad thing really. You've got no other experience to draw on as such, so you, you just got to go with it and, and, and do the best you can. Yeah, for sure. 
Michael's looking at playing the cannon in the uh, middle pocket here. Just, just, just hit it a bit firm. Came off a bit squarer than he wanted. It looks like he's going to go all out attack so far. Yeah, generally quite an attacking player, Michael. Things I haven't seen him play before. But, uh, he always, if the out's there, he'll be always be looking to go for it. And uh, I say that was certainly how we played against Phil Harrison the other night. Incredible performance. And Nigel Clark's uh, last 16 match has taken out Lee Kendall 8 3. So, two world champions in a row. Yeah, Lee Kendall, I mean, he's been on good form this year, current <laughs> European champion, and uh, been playing fairly well on the UK tours. But to, again, Great performance, you, you know, on paper you'd have never had Nigel Clark down to beat him eight three, but it just shows the quality and the depth that there is in this in the in the English game, if you like, of eight ball. Well, this is the first time I've experienced in it, and uh, yeah, it is quite incredible how many good players are out there. Yeah, and I think it's certainly on the last two or three years of the UK tour that was formed back in 2012. There's an open draw in that, so there's no seedings. So pretty much anybody can play anybody, and uh, although the you know the t tendency is the top players will rise to the top, you know, and win the events, there's a lot of good players getting to the right to the back end of them tournaments now that people, have, you know, five years ago have never heard of, um, and there's a lot of quality players, the likes of Dave Fernandez, who's always been a, a reasonably good stick, but he's he's come onto the tour, he's got into the England side, and now he's you know he's got to the final this year at the World Masters. It was unfortunate last night to lose 10-7 to Craig Waddingham. Yeah. And people like Dave and a lot of them, like Dylan Leary you mentioned earlier on, he's on the UK tour, you know, and he's playing for Northern Ireland. And uh, just look like a, almost like a little trick shot there from fair, Michael Hope. Fair result there. Yeah. So there is a real depth in quality and, and there's a lot of people now have got the belief on the UK tour that it's not just three or four people that can win the tour. Yeah. There's probably 20 people. I think... Uh, in Australia, it's, it's very uh, noticeable now. The world rules have been in for 20 years. I think it was 94 they came in. and uh, So now you've got an entire generation of players that have just played world rules and not the old, you know, the old tactical game. Mm -hmm. They're all potters. Everyone can run racks these days. It's, um, everyone can break and dish, in the, even in the lower divisions. So it's a scary game. Yeah, so there's, there's so many good young players coming up these days. Say Michael Hope and Nigel Clark are two of those who've risen right to the top of the game, contesting a world semi final. So, second frame, Michael Hope, and it's now 2 0 in this race to 10. So, frame three, Nigel Clark comes to the table. Only had two shots so far in this match. Break shot in uh, frame one. A little bit of a stiff arm shot in frame two, employing the cut break there. Not made a ball and uh, a little bit of a messy table there straight away. So, it's uh, even if he had made a ball there, it uh, certainly wouldn't have had anything easy. To be going out, and that's really what he needs now, Peter, isn't it? He does, yeah. He just wants just wants one break to come come off well for him, and uh, a couple of easy roll in starters to loosen the arm up and, and get into the match. He's tried to that wasn't on. He's tried to make it on. So this is a good opportunity for Nigel. Plenty of 
plenty of work to be done in this frame. The yellows all yellows in the cluster in the middle of the table should all come apart nicely though. Mm. And plenty of coverage on reds. Just only one shot, but he's cued one right and uh, and got it going. Yeah, we're live and exclusive here this afternoon from the Imperial Hotel in Blackpool, part of the hotel collection. Nice, just, no, just played a little developing shot there. Just trying to get that one of those yellows out. And he's got the pace of that beautifully. And set that nicely over the middle without running it too far. So. It's a nice pop. Looks pretty comfortable, Michael. Yeah, I just spoke to me and said, "Have you had much, you know, experience of this at the table?" He said, "No, I've had about three or four frames before. That's all." <laughs> so, uh, but he, he spent a fair time in the practice room before, and I think they allocated an hour and a half's practice. And I think he pretty spent the full hour and a half in there, you know, yeah. really going at it. Say, particularly with, with the break as well. So. Uh, Yeah, he certainly looks at home so far. Which it's easy to do when things are going right for you. Mm. Uh, Nigel's up to there just to play the foul. Yeah, he doesn't want to force the issue, make Michael force the issue. Mm. Which I'm sure he'd be happy to do. Yellow's, uh, that yellow's in a pretty good spot in between the two reds on the left cushion. So you probably get to the potting angle of that, but neither of the reds will go, but they're coming out right now. Yeah, it's just looked to develop them out nicely there. Second and, uh, probably would have liked better shape on one, but mm -hmm. just gonna bump this off the cushion uh, and go safe. Yeah, it's a good shot. Yeah, excellent shot there from Michael Hope, and I think he's sort of like one good shot away now from developing those balls, and, and you know, and giving him a chance. And I think that's what he'll do. You know, I don't think he's not he's probably not prepared to sit back here. He's shown his intent in the first couple of frames, so uh, yeah, now he's got some coverage. You can afford to to open him up. Doesn't look like again, Nigel's going to let that happen. Yeah, he's looking to play the foul again. Is he here? Yeah, he is. Played it very well. Yeah. Great coverage on the pocket. Awkward leave. So what can he do with two shots here? That yellow over the middle, uh, Nigel put there earlier, could prove to be uh, pretty useful. Something hit a cushion? Yeah, he flicked it. Oh, he's, cut, cushion, it on the way. Yeah, he's yeah. cut it on the way through. Yeah, he has. No. Yeah. Second visit, but he's not really done an awful lot with them. He's, look, he's a big shot coming up now here. Yeah, it's huge. To that top left. Yeah, if he drops this in, though, very good chance. Very. quite a way there very wide yeah. and this is just what Nigel needed now great opportunity for Nigel Clark to get his first frame on the board and they always say that uh, the hardest frames to win are the first and the last without a doubt and just take his time and uh, take his time getting through these they're, they're all pretty easy provided you don't lose the white too much for the middle pocket then he's just over hit it a little and 
just pacing himself. Make sure of everything. Yeah, he's on it perfectly now. Last thing he wants to do is make a make a silly mistake here and give Michael the opportunity to go three 0 in front with the break. Just get this one on the board. Is he just going to screw around here? Screw around the back, or is he looking at the plant? Don't think you'd be looking at the plant if you no, had an option. There's, there's too much can go wrong there. Yeah, particularly with that. They are, I think that yellow is just a fraction high in the middle pocket so if, if he was just to over hit it the yellow could just go past the middle pocket a little bit and make it well he wouldn't be able to pot it from where he was he'd have to be trying to go up the table so, so he's screw back past the black well well i'm surprised so am i mm. i think the last thing you want to do is leave yourself shots like this so you can go wrong very easily That's a super shot, that is well controlled, and that's exactly what it needed. So just still, a fraction over here, and the yellow goes past another pocket. He still may just have to roll it in and leave and play it from there. I'm not sure how much angle he's got. See, so yeah, he's just jacking the cue up, just to stun back a little bit. Okay. Just enough. Yeah, just hold the nerve and stay down on the shot. It shouldn't be a drama. And the eight's down, and Nigel Clark gets his first frame on the board. It's 2-1, Michael Hope. So, Nigel Clark looked on there, he's got to be a little bit happier than he was a few minutes ago, he gets his first frame on the board, but frame four, Michael Hope to break, he still leaves by two frames to one. Nicely controlled white ball on the break there, but I don't think he's got one, has he? No, he returns to his chair empty-handed, as they say. Again, not the easiest table in the world, he's got the red and the yellow tight at the bottom of the table here on the bottom rail probably probably say red <coughs> and for people following the streams we have the uh, men's team semi-finals tonight Six o'clock or nine o'clock. Red balls in play. And then tomorrow, 11 a.m., the men's team final. 2 p.m. for the ladies' singles final and 5 p.m. for the men's final. Yeah, all streamed live and exclusive in HD from the Imperial Hotel in Blackpool. Michael's going about this, he's, he's obviously going to finish, he's going to have to find a way to get to that red and yellow at the bottom of the table, I'm not sure. It'd be uh, pretty easy, <laughs> well he's just got that ball to open and just 
It's a tough one to open and get on. Should be easy enough to to disturb them both off the the one over the right bottom uh, corner, but uh, having a shot afterwards is a difficult bit. Like he's probably got the angle here to do it, but like you say, he's then got to get back on it, which, which isn't easy. So, surprised. I thought he might have just earlier on, he had the option just to drop. I thought it's nice, isn't it? To, do, to just drop the um, the red over the corner pocket at the top and, and block the two yellows off, and yeah. then look to develop that red out while he's got control. You're doubling this back. He's got it! What a fantastic shot from Nigel Clark! That is an absolute ripper. <laughs> so one good positional shot now and, and it's all his. Yeah, and uh, from looking a very tough out a couple of shots ago, he's pulled out, I think as you call it, an absolute beaut. Absolute beauty. Tricky position here. But I just missed the yellow, just missed the black, just missed the uh, centre pocket. Pretty much got to come straight back on the line it's on. Which he's done very nicely. That looked easy, but that can go wrong very easily, that shot. Yeah. He's probably just gone far enough. He wants to take the red over the corner pocket. May have, yeah. Just see it, I think. But, uh, maybe not the tallest person, Nigel, in the world here, so he might just be stretching a little bit. It looks okay. If he if he doesn't have that shot, he can punch this in the corner and come out off one cushion. Yeah. Looks like he's doing that. Yeah. Just needs to strike this nicely. Oof. And he hasn't. Just seemed to hit that before he was ready to hit it. Yeah. yeah just uh, maybe just need to have taken a few more seconds there, steady himself. And yeah. Just, just get the shot in his mind, like you say. There was no no pause at all on the on the swing before he hit that. A little bit fortunate he's blocked the yellow, so. Uh... Yeah, but by the same token, he's killed the red. Yeah. So Michael won't be too unhappy with that. I'm pretty sure he's made, Michael's played the uh, he's played the pot there, but uh, it's not gone in, so certainly so second prize. Yeah. Second prize is just fine at the moment. Could play this red off two cushions. I think what's he playing off the side cushion? Just push it over the other side. No face cut. He's flicked off it. It's in. <laughs> he, he did not want that. A couple of pretty reasonable shots he's played now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think the double was played all along, but uh, he's now left himself in a total snooker. So, the beauty of this only he's got to do is just make contact with the red. It's easy yeah. enough to do, but <coughs> you really don't want to open that yellow up too much either. No. So, just, yeah. Seven seconds. Should be fine. Oh, he's opened them up though. I think he's opened them up. Yeah. Certainly the yellow closest to the cue ball goes, and, and probably the one just above the red may go in that corner pocket now. Yeah, play that he, straight up. To be honest, he could play that now. He could play the plant. Yeah, I think he will. And just drop the other one back down the cush. It's uh, probably both of them there, which is always the danger at that pace, but. Uh, yeah. It's never a good thing. Still a tiny bit tricky. I mean, they're all there, but they're all on cushions too. Mm. Yeah, because the problem is quite a bit of distance between these two balls at the top two at the bottom. 
So at some point, it's going to have to queue. I get the cue ball travelling a little bit here. He pots this yellow the corner, and you see he's left himself pretty much straight on this now. He's going to be see leaving himself a long pot unless he's unless he's just left a bit enough angle to get out here. A bit difficult to tell from where we are, but to and even just he only needs to sort of screw across to the left cushion, then he can just play a little stun up the other end. He may even just roll it in, play it into the right side. Yeah, that's exactly what I was saying. Yeah. It's probably got the angle to roll under it, but... How does he feel? Yeah, you're going to tell after this shot. Looks like he's going to stun it. Oh, he's just rattled it. Which is the reason he hasn't got position. Mm -hmm. So this will test the queuing of Nigel. Yeah, it's going to be slightly hampered by that yellow. That is a lovely shot there. It'll give him plenty of confidence. Yeah. And again, it's just what Nigel Clark wanted. Looked a little bit shaky at the start and uh, a couple of frames on the board, get his arm going. And confidence starts to grow. Down goes the black and it's now two frames all. So frame five, two frames all, this best of 19 world semi-final. Nigel Clark again employs the cut break. And once again, nothing down. A little bit fortunate that black is tied up with the yellow left hand side of the table. Other than that, it was a fairly decent split on the break. Yeah, they spread nicely. Yellows down this end look pretty good. Yeah, it's just a question of whether that um, yellow at the top passes into the top right-hand corner. It looks like it's going red, so you... No, it probably doesn't pass it. Yeah. It's a good pot. Red ball's in the flesh. Just rested. May open the black here. <coughs> yeah, he might just try and notice the black and open it up here if he's got the angle. Does he still have that one, the red that's underneath that yellow? Disturbed the black and the yellow, but uh, still got that red that's just below the black to the right of it. And he's just cut off another pocket for that too. Mm. Yeah, very tricky out here. Still got that ball. The ball over the right middle is going to be a good link up ball as well. Oh, he's wiped his feet in the way in there. Mm -hmm. 
it's okay. So where does that red go? Top corner. I think it does. The way he played that last shot. But, uh, I think he's just putting himself into a little bit of trouble here. Okay, he's just going to need to be very precise from here on. As soon as he takes this ball, there's nothing stopping uh, Nigel if he gets to the table. So, really needs to make these. There's not really any safety available either. See there, shot clock. In this game, you only have. 60 seconds to play a shot, you get a warning at 30 seconds. I don't think the uh, shot clock was even necessary in the previous match. <laughs> no, I don't think there was too many 30 seconds in that, but uh, that was certainly not the result Michael Holt was looking for there. I think he, he's, must, uh, yeah, well, he must have been trying to slide a bit further so he had the one in the middle play the one in the middle come back underneath and play the red up in the top left mm. a a containing shot yeah he's got one of options. Nigel's yellows onto the side rail another one that's probably goes bottom left the one that's by the red see the referee there Colin Fry is looking on intently A good opportunity if Nigel would take control of the frame. He's tried to get on his back foot straight away, mm -hmm. which he has. And he's made the red a little tougher as well. Well, where that red above that yellow is on the right cushion, I don't think he can get a hell of a lot better position on on it than he is now. The only option he'd have to, to get any better position would have been to try and bump it mm. off. You know, bump into it off. And I just thought whether he had the angle there to take that quite thin and take it back up, maybe nudge into that red. But the problem with doing that is it's moving it nearer to the corner, part, the middle pocket. And obviously, if, if Michael gets a chance, it uh, makes it so much easier then. Landed pretty straight on this too. Can he reach? Okay, not the tallest person, Nigel, but uh, he's option just to play safe. Yeah, I could, probably could have done a little better with that. Yeah, because certainly the pocket's open, and I think Michael can see the red on the right hand side of the table. Mm. If he, you know, he can nick this up the top and cause mm. a problem. It's, uh, I think he quite thought about that for as long as he could have. Maybe just a little bit of inexperience right at this top level out in the arena with the uh, with the shot clock and everything else. Like I say, he just uh, could have taken a little bit more time. Well, Mike was trying to develop everything out there and uh, not sure they even thought there was a double on with the red, but uh, he certainly opened the frame right up now. Well, he might just be saying, all right, I don't think you can get him. Mm. He's uh, giving the Nigel the stare there as he's going around the table. The red's going to be pretty close to going in this uh, bottom left too. Oh, he's got the double kiss, which he would not have wanted. Yeah, Mike was just having a look to see if that red goes past the black and the yellow. And he's playing it. And great shot queuing from where he is. Oh, that's bad. It's a bit of bad luck. Just got the wrong kiss. Yeah. 
Well, then we've just got to squeeze off the cushion first. Yeah. It's got to be finished in front of the yellow. Yeah. So, will Nigel have a go here? You almost get like, feel like it's it's one of those frames where really you're going to have to go eventually because you see, it's, it's a nice shot he's played, but. Still hasn't covered the pocket. No. Gonna have to play this. Just, just caught the jaw and see if you keep giving someone an opportunity. Can end up if you don't take them when they're there. Sometimes I'll get lucky or something can happen. Yeah, we see it so many times at this level where people just think, "Well, they're there now. Go on, have a go." And they think, "No, I'm not quite sure." And, and and they just play the safety shot. And eventually, like you say, somebody just gets a bit lucky and nicks the frame yeah. where really they shouldn't have won it. Um, you know, I say to our guys, even on my local league team, you know, if you get an opportunity, take it, because as, as much as control you think you've got in a frame, somebody just suddenly flukes one on you, and and you're in trouble, and you, you end up losing the frame. Well, and, and personally, as a player, if if I see any out there for me opponent, and then they don't, and they lay up and do something, just even a snooker, I'm wrapped because I'm. I'm getting back to the table and you got a chance to create something. Well, He's asked the question of him again. Mm -hmm. A bit of a dangerous question, giving, giving two visits away. Yeah, how will he respond this time? Mm -hmm. We cut the yellow back in the right uh, bottom pocket here. And and disturb those two up the top. I was just thinking that whether he got the angle for playing that shot. I have to be pretty close. He tried the double plant there. Mm -hmm. Second visit. It's back to where we were a couple of minutes ago. I think probably just looks to roll this over the corner pocket. Double the other yellow back up the top, then stunned into that one to push it over the hole. He's just over hit that a little bit. I think he certainly want, wouldn't want it to be bring it. He was trying to bring that out into the open, get it over the other corner pocket. Yeah. No, really, Nigel can use that. He could. You know, shift that bad ball at the top end of the table. Well, he might just get it straight out now. You don't really want to get it too close to. Uh... Yeah, no, that's a good shot. Just get it out so it's on, maybe a little bit further than that. But... So, a little bit of a tactical battle. Ensuing here in frame five. Pretty good touch. Probably just touch it with the tip and leave him there. Is there a lot of value in getting out of it? Yeah. No. Yeah, played foul. exactly the shot you said there, Peter. Yeah. Just have to play the tactical foul and uh, see a lot of players uh, just sort of put the cue right up in the air and just look, dab down with the tip yeah. sometimes because they don't want to move the cue ball at all. Just speed control, it's um, you try and get out of the snooker there, and you're leaving him fat on, and it's actually harder for him to do what he's just done there. Mm. You know, there's a chance of him getting that wrong, whereas if you get out of the snooker and leave him there, he's already on it, doesn't have to do anything. He's gone for the disturbance, oh. he's got it, and he's given himself a little bit of a chance here, just on the wrong side. But it's something. Yeah. Oh, geez, what a scary shot to play at the middle pocket from there. 
that's cool the jewel. Yeah. Desperate and lucky there from Michael Hope. I don't think he'd left with much choice to be fair in that situation. No, they couldn't hit it hard because of the angle of the white was any pace he put on it, the white was going straight into that yellow. Yeah. A great opportunity for Nigel that he's earned himself now. That'll do just fine. They'd probably both go, because they'll just come back up the right hand side of the table here, I would think. side of the middle. That's a good pace. Just overdone that one a bit. Yeah, he's left this far more difficult than it needed to be. I mean, he's overrun that by a good 12, 18 inches. He yeah. could have been a lot, you know, a little bit shorter. A little bit short on the shot and it'd been fine, but this. You've got to adjust this shot now because the corner pocket's in your line. Well, that's a superb pot from Nigel Clark there. Tough shot. Then tried to get cute with it and just left himself a shot. Oof. But that was the shot before, it was the error. He's left himself way too wide. Should have been a standard, just a, a stun straight down for an easy black. <laughs> oh he's played to drop that absolutely dead weight and he's hit the far jaw. He's pinched every bit of pocket oh. possible. Gravity saved him then. I'll tell you now. His uh, heart would have been in his mouth for a second then. Definitely so, but Michael Hope eventually takes frame five. He now leads by three frames to two. I think it looks like he may have uh, just left the arena as well. So, frame six, that short break. Michael Hope breaks off. Great break off there. He's made a ball as well. This is just what he needed. I, uh, I just ran into him as he's ducked off for his toilet break then. I said, uh, pinched a bit more pocket than you would have liked. He goes, yeah, I hit it so soft, it's just napped on him. And uh, he 
definitely a nervous moment. <laughs> <laughs> Not quite Shane, that, that caused the toilet break, but uh, <laughs> yes, it, uh, it was certainly a little hairy moment there at the end of that frame. But now, great opportunity here now. You know, just seemed to get a little bit bogged down that last frame and uh, pinched it, for want of a better phrase, and uh, say a, a break and finish now. Take the one over the hole, come back around. No. Oh, jeez. Again, he's pinched a lot of the pocket on that plant. I don't think he intended to. Always a difficulty when the balls are quite a, quite a way apart, yeah. even if it's close to the pocket. And you're trying to control the both the reds and the white as well, so it's easy to lose sight of the actual potting angle when you do that. But he's in, uh, got himself back in good shape. Yeah. It is. Michael's one of these players. If he can get his hand on the table and get a run, then you know you could reel off three or four frames in very quick succession. Yeah. And put Nigel under a massive amount of pressure in this match. Just did wait. Just roll this. Probably just, I don't know if he needs to get all the way to the cushion, you probably just want to uh, punch it out of one cushion, come back around the black. So it should be fine and uh, should be a 4 2 lead. Did this, very well. Yeah, great. Simple eight ball, corner pocket. Michael Hope now leads by four frames to two in this race to ten. See the balls there set on the overhead. Frame seven. seven It'll be Nigel to break in off. I don't think he's had a ball off the break yet, Nigel. Well, he's, he's got one there, but he's got the cue ball as well, unfortunately. Yeah. Lost the cue ball there in the middle pocket. Have a look at these reds. <laughs> This takes more than a minute, I'll be surprised. Yeah. It might just seem take a little bit longer than a minute, but uh, <laughs> like you say, there is nothing can go wrong here except uh, Michael Hope's back arm. It's, uh, he couldn't have wished for a better uh, result there after Nigel Clark broke off. transition between the bottom two balls. Yeah, just looking at that, there's quite a lot of yellows in that area, isn't it? So he's, he's just got to make sure whether he's going to play and try and get out between the black and the yellow that's to the left of it as we look. Yeah, he could be in a bit of a funny position here. Yeah, because he's just sort of come a bit too far down the table, so he's taking the cue ball away from his work here. Yeah. Might be after one to play one of his famous... Uh, Dead weight shots again, middle pocket. <laughs> pinch, <laughs> just pinch, be, uh, pinch all of the pocket yeah. and wall. Then it's last and after that one, I think. So he just wants to screw straight out, I suppose. Oh, he 
reckons if looking at his thumbs back two inches, he's on it. Mm. A tricky shot. Has he gone too far? Uh, yeah. I don't think he's gone far enough. Playing for the gap. Up and down or around. So it wouldn't be so bad if it was a total snooker, which it looks like it is. You can just drop round the angles and just try and drop on it, dead weight. Mm. Yeah, looks like what he's doing. He's yeah. just caught a bit of jaw at the end. Yeah, he was unlucky there. Just wanted to be a fraction further over on the first the contact with the first cushion. It's still tough. Still tough for Nigel here. Mm. The red's in one of the red's in a spot where it's uh, it's annoying for yeah, Nigel. You but see it's, there, Michael yeah. Holtz is explaining to his supporters. <laughs> it was like a, a two inch gap that he needed to be in. It's actually a bit awkward to hide because the red's the red's out far enough where you can't just get up on the left side rail and hide. Dangerous. Watch the double kiss like that. Yeah, he's done it. Has he? Has he hidden enough of that uh, red? I'm not sure he has. Even from that angle. That's um. Look, it, it's a pretty bad mistake because you know the double kiss is such a dangerous thing to happen. And, and that's exactly what he's done. Oh. Missed the pot. Yeah, it's pretty pretty fine. Well, do we see it pretty thick to, when you see where that white's gone? Mm. He still needs to settle. He re really needs to run a rack, Nigel. Just get the confidence up. Mm. This won't be it. Move that and put it back in the exact same position. Yeah. <coughs> I just thought he'd be he'd be trying to pop that and and then just nudge on one of those, you know, and, and leave the snooker and leave Michael in a bit of trouble. Yeah, he should probably do that now. Which he's yeah. probably going to do now. But again, has he just taken that a bit too far out? Michael's having a quick look there. We're going to get this. I think he can see it. Very thin, if, he can, if it is. Not seen the referee moving, so I don't think he's asked for a total snooker. Oh, he has now, yeah. See our referee Colin Fries, you can't quite see him, he's crouched down. He's just looking for the total snooker. I'm not sure. I don't, Do you, I don't think it is. The red and yellow line looks like it misses the white. Yeah. Well, if it's not. Not an easy swerve, but one you'd expect him to get. Mm. Again, though, swerving full length of the table on the eight foot, completely different shot to what he'd be used to playing. Yeah, but you, I mean, you know, I'm sure these guys are pretty proficient snooker players too. Yeah, a lot of them do play snooker. Yeah, so. and the, and the beauty with it is, black's onto both corners, mm. and if anywhere on the up the top of the table, you're on mm. it. Well, Colin's having a real good look at this. I'm surprised actually he hasn't got another cue ball out. And put it next where to the, the next to the next yellow. To the yellow yeah. And what you do then, you're looking to form a line of the three balls, and that gives you far better sight, particularly with the yellow. Sorry, the cue ball at this end being right on the rail. It's very difficult to look. So if you put another cue ball next to the yellow, and then look down from that end of the table, the ball end, you can see so much better. Yep. So he's obviously made his decision. I, to be honest, I don't think the title matters. Well, it's pretty stiff. <laughs> Problem is, he's flicked the, the red, he's opened that pocket up now. Yeah. I think Nigel's got half a chance, and I think he should be looking at taking this. You know. Yeah, there's no reason.
reason why he can't get these. I'd like to be a bit straighter here. I'll try and hold. No, he's hopefully coming back across to the other side. Possibly be a bit too straight. I have to punch this and get back across again. Mm. Needs to go. Needs to go. You've just got to be a little bit careful if he does disturb the red here, it doesn't come across and, and block the, the yellow on well, the bottom rail. Well, he might almost need to disturb the red here, though, because he's playing across to the other side of the table. He needs that red out of the way. Mm. Will he pick a gap or will he get a cannon? Oh, he's covered. Oh, yeah. It's a super shot, actually. Really good shot there from Nigel Clark. He's, well, he, yeah, he's fortunate that it didn't drop, but it's a very good shot. Joy there. That was the only option he had, I think. Let's double this. No, he's going to move the red. I think he's probably doubling it across. If he didn't get it in a potable position, he, he wouldn't have a pot on the other, the other yellow. Mm. Carefully. So. Just hold for the middle pocket, I suppose. Yeah. So it's been a frame of chances for both players here. This seventh frame. Michael Hope could have been putting some distance between himself and Nigel Clark. But as is, the black disappears and it's 4 3 now to Michael Hope. So, oh, eighth frame, Michael Hope breaks off. He's got the breaking cue after that, definitely. And it's worked nicely for him. Yeah, again, quite a decent split on both colours except just the red and the yellow tucked up together, top right and corner. So, opportunities to develop those though. Once again, a good chance here for Michael Hope. Good frame. good frame for Nigel to pinch last frame. He's, uh, he's gone in off on the break and after a couple of chances, still got away with the frame. Definitely one that Michael let slip. So I really want to get these. Get that two frame buffer again. Yeah, he probably thinks the match is there for the taking. I mean, if, if you're a gambling man before this, I'm sure that the, the bookmakers have had make, Michael Hope as, the, as a big favourite for it. But uh, he probably feels that, well, oh, I'm, I'm the favourite. I should be, you know, making the running in this game. 
and put my stamp on it. But just got to be careful. He doesn't try to force it too much, you know, and force finishes that aren't there. Yeah. yeah. I'm not sure. Just got one yellow to move. Where he's going, he's got no obvious way of, uh, of breaking that out. No, it's almost the one over the corner you'd want to use. Yeah. And if that's the case, you want to leave the one over the left middle, so you've got a very good chance of being on a ball. You may have to play that now. Yeah, these are pretty awkward now. <coughs> Definitely didn't want that full of contact on that ball. Did he get the double? Did he get the cannon? Yeah, he's cannon into him, but he's not freed that yellow up. Well, he's cannon the red into him, so. He gets one more go at it. Is there? You can screw through that gap. Do the two reds just under the ball line. You see, he's just pointing with his cue there, where he wants this uh, cue ball to come flying off. Mm. And the problem is, if he doesn't get this right, no, he's just looking at the double. I wasn't sure the double went because of that red, but obviously he feels it. Because we've played it for it, but has he gone a bit too far? No. He's played the cross double. Yeah. Missed that by quite a way though. Yeah. So chance for Nigel, Nigel Clark here in frame eight. Yeah, we seem to keep to saying that as well. You know, Michael's given him plenty of chances. And to be fair, whoever gets through this semi-final, be it either Michael or Nigel, will not be able to give this amount of chances to Mick Hill in that world final tomorrow evening well to be honest we're at, we're in the eighth frame and these guys have made more mistakes than that entire last match so uh, he's had a bit of a result there because he's missed the pot but uh, he's left the snooker could have played as a shot to nothing i think um i think mick mick in the last match only made one or two yeah i think noticeable errors Shot. Yeah, not really much more he could have done because no. uh, all the reds are in the open, so he's, he's and he's left it where it goes in most pockets still. Yeah. Still seems to be forcing the arm through a bit, Nigel. I've seen him play a couple of matches during the week, and usually looks a bit smoother than this. Which is totally understandable. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's the biggest stage he's played on. So. Certainly the biggest match of his life to date. Yeah, this. to do here now. He might just want to stay completely off the cushion where he's yeah. Mind you he's got a fair bit of angle on this. 
Just one cushion. No. He's coming up to Has he snookered himself? It looks like he has. If he hasn't snookered, he probably he certainly can only snick a little bit off it, but I don't think he can. I think that's a full goal snooker. Yeah, that's uh, he's overplayed that quite a lot. Yeah. Well that was the previous shot that's cost him that. Uh, yes, same thing again. Yeah, there's just there's no need to be playing that shot now from this side from that side of the table. Anywhere on the left side of the table when you've got a shot. Missed it. Ball. Missed it. Two visits. Frame over, I'm afraid. Pretty sure this won't take two visits. So, big opportunity missed there. Nigel Clark to draw level. So, Nigel goes ahead 5-3. So frame nine, Nigel Clark to break. Big error in the last frame. Could have levelled the match up at four all as it is. He trails by two frames. So we go into the uh, the frame before the mid match interval. And once again, nothing down. <coughs> Fairly nice split. Yellow, yellows look quite. Decent position here, the little cluster where the black is. A couple of yellows, a couple of reds, but. Uh, yeah, they're all makeable. Yeah. So I think Mike was just having a look there where one probably goes bottom right. Got to be feeling quite good, Michael Hope. But, uh, certainly thought he'd lost that last frame and uh, he's pinched it really. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah, it looked very straightforward with uh, getting three balls left on the table. And Nigel's, uh, yeah, just left himself a little bit too much work to do and made the position hard and snooging himself. Mm, just looking a little bit despondent there, looking on, hoping that he'll get a chance in this frame. Try and split him, and it looks like he's blocked that uh, right hand corner pocket now. Yeah. He's, he's still got the one right middle, I think. But, uh, In all honesty, I think uh, Nigel would be very lucky to be four all at the moment. Still think 5 3, probably about where the score should be. Yeah, yeah, there's been, uh, like you say, there have been plenty of mistakes in this match. And I say, it, it, it's almost understandable to say both. Players never been anywhere near this sort of like level in the world championships. I know, say, Michael has been the under 21 world champion, and there's no disrespect to that, you know, that title that, that is against some quality players. But this is now out in the arena on the eight foot table, and they've just never had this experience before. And, you know, you look, look at the likes of um, Mikhail and, and Lee Kendall and Phil Harrison and and even Giuseppe D'Imperio and Craig Waddingham, they've been out there a few times now yeah. and they've got that experience. 
and uh, and that's what it's all about, you know, building experience. I mean, and and you'll know that as a as a top player. Oh, you know? absolutely. Still remember my first nationals, first time I represented Victoria, I'm shaking like a leaf in my first few matches. But the second time you go, you you're a completely different player. Still just forcing the arm through. Even these are all there. If you can get get a couple of tricky positional shots, he's uh, he's a chance of getting them. Yeah, whether he's developed that red out far enough. Oh, he's probably he's killed a yellow in the process, mm. but he's probably put the red in a worse spot than it was. I think it was on up the top. Yeah, yeah, that doesn't pot anywhere now. Mm. Top right hasn't left himself a lot either. No. Try and get that red out of there. Yeah. Yeah, let's put it back in there, really. Uh, look, look, that's a really that's good safety shot. That is a brilliant safety shot. Yeah, that's what he's, he's pulled that one out. He, you know, he has put the red back on the, the yeah. bottom rail, but uh, look as good as that shot was. If he gets out of this and, and doesn't foul, you know. Michael's in a better position than he was because of the ball Mar uh, Nigel's just killed. So, mm. yeah, so can just to play the tactical foul here. Yeah. To put me on the red. So, I'd, as I said, as good as that shot was, I, I don't think there was a huge benefit for, with it. There's every chance he'll still be worse off than he was after this visit. So. Yeah. The uh, yellow definitely doesn't pass now with where he's put that. The red. Has he gone too far? Or is he just okay? That's lovely speed control, even if he has gone a touch too far. Because the one thing Nigel Clark could be looking to do here, if he get down the table, he could look to play the tactical foul, drop a red onto that yellow bottom left. Yep. You know, and take complete control. He could do it from this shot. No, I didn't feel that was the way to do this. I'm not sure what his plan was there. Maybe he's now just looking to drop a red. No, he's gone for the pot. He's opened up the yellow. Mm. Yeah, the tactical feel. Don't like it now, though. No, there's too much open. The bottom right hand corner pocket is very open now. And you're leaving him straight under him to play him up the top if you want it anyway. Mm. Oh, he went. Well, it's obviously a camera angle deceived us there, I'm afraid. Both of us in the com box, we didn't think that that red went past the yellow. Obviously it did, and now he's in prime position. I didn't think there was any chance at all of that happening. I thought he, maybe he's going to try and jam it out. Money shot. And it played nicely. A little bit unlucky. Yeah, it's just, just st stuck on the, the, the knuckle. You still make the pot. But mm. It's... Uh, just means position can go wrong, especially when the white's coming back towards all those yellows. That's a great shot. Yeah, super shot there from Nigel Clark. Very, very good shot. Yeah. Uh, 
can go so wrong so easily, that shot. Yeah. Especially when you're queuing down. Down the goes the black. And it's now 5-4 Michael Hope in this world semi-final. And we'll now be having a 10 minute interval, ladies and gentlemen. gentlemen so join us soon. Back to the action from Blackpool.
Tenth frame, Michael Hope to break, leading by five frames to four. Time running. So, back to the action. Michael Hope breaks off frame ten. Open table. Nigel Clark has uh, just cut the deficit back again to one frame. Five four to Michael. He's exactly what he didn't want after the interval was uh, a dry break, having lost that last frame just before we went to the interval. He's uh, put a dry a nice a good chance here. Yeah, they spread pretty well. Nothing really looked in danger of going in. Both just struggling, struggling to get going a bit. Uh, probably Nigel more so. <laughs> Michael looks relatively comfortable out there. He just seems to be trying to force things, force himself to get going a bit more. Yeah, great, great, great recovery shot there. He played a poor first shot, Nigel did, and uh, left himself hampered. And uh, he's played a good, good recovery shot. He may just have enough, enough of that red to be able to get on it. Uh, probably have to. Well, if he's, he's on the gap up, up the top left. Or he's got a double, but the double leaves him pretty much in the same position. Yeah, that's the one he took. Just see, can he see the one bottom right? He's having a look. I think he can. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he's on <coughs> it. Just want to be careful how far the white spreads here. I think the problem he's got here is that red and the black over the, the left hand middle because he was almost in the perfect position then if it, if it went to you know to play that ball but he obviously it doesn't go yeah, and if he was six or eight inches further out into the table he'd have the angle to run this in get over there and make a bit of contact on maybe the black yeah. well this is all right yeah Plays it off the red now. Yeah, and run through and run through for the one on the cushion up the top. Mm -hmm. Main thing here is trying to control the red he's playing off. Mm -hmm. Something you mentioned earlier on, it's about playing the plant where the balls are quite a way apart. You're trying to control three balls here, you know. Yeah. I mean, ideally, that red cannon's into the yellow and sits there like that. Hopefully he's still on the one on the right. Is he still on the one up the top? Either he might be blocked. I can't quite tell from that angle. No, it doesn't look like he's on no. it. Maybe, maybe a little swerve shot. It's a horrible uh, plan to have to play. Yeah. Especially when you're not getting any coverage. On anything uh, playing it, so it looks like that's what he's going for, unless he's cutting it across the other side. No, he's played the plant. Oh, oh he's played a, that super shot. What a fantastic shot. <coughs> and this has surely got to be doing masses for my uh, Nigel's confidence now. Absolutely. Did admit at the interval that he was still struggling a bit, thought he might settle into the match after a couple of frames, but didn't do. He's still struggling, but that. This has been an excellent clearance. One or two tricky shots. 
The eight ball, left hand middle, and it's five frames all in this race to ten. So we're just waiting there for the uh, the balls to be set as we see on the overhead. The referee Colin Friars. Eleven frames. And I reckon he'd certainly be feeling a lot better than he was twenty minutes ago. That red's come out of the way. It looked like that red was going to get stuck in with the yellows. And I tell you what, the yellows look great here. They do. Even the reds aren't terrible, to be perfectly honest. Pretty sure they all go. Mm. Yellow ball's nominated. Just a tricky starter on yellows. One around the black spot. Bridging off the cushion. Oh, he's missed it. Yeah, nice. oh, he's they, missed it. They can be a little bit tricky when you're bridging off the cushion across the table. And you'd be disappointed with that. That was, a, that was a really good opportunity to hit the lead. Yeah, that was a great chance there for Nige. Having you know, boosted the confidence in that previous frame, taking out a real tricky finish. That's, uh, that's open table, isn't it? Yeah. Hasn't left him a great deal on the yellows, but... As I said, the reds are, the reds are pretty good too. Oh, it's, it's bobble, it's it's certainly wiped the jaw a few times today. Yeah. Michael Hopas. He's awkward now. He's got to, yeah. he's got to cut this up the top right. have to jack the cue up a little bit as well so he doesn't uh, drop the cue ball in the middle pocket. And this is the money shot for him here. Super shot. Great shot. Yeah, super shot there from Michael Hope. Uh, has probably, probably try and come out just a little bit lower than where he is to play that red right across the table. Or in, uh, he might be looking at it in the centre as well. Sure, exactly where he wants to be. Yeah, taking his time a little bit on this shot for the uh, 30 second call from our timekeeper Monique from South Africa. Yeah, it was a tricky shot. Playing with a lot of uh, running side to get to get down on the one in the middle. He probably probably <coughs> overdid how much side he needed, but yeah, there she is, our South African timekeeper Monique. Having a little glance over to the camera. Yeah, keeping a watchful eye on that. I think actually the, the clock's on this side as oh, well. Okay. So I'll give you the benefit of the doubt on that we one, Butters. Absolutely. <laughs> I think she was conscious though that uh, <laughs> she was there. So. No, I mean, that's great. I and mean, that's another thing just to talk about a little bit out of that. that it's not just the, the international players that get to come over here, it's actually the, you know, the international referees. We've got some, some very good people come over from Australia in the past, some referees. Yeah. And, and South Africa always turn out quality officials, you know. They come and, and, and I think quite a few of our reps over there worked and, and learned things, if you like, from them. Yeah. You know, things that they've not picked up on before and, and whatever. Yeah, there's so uh, There's a great number say, of them. Yeah, some, some really good officials around. And yeah, these events aren't possible without all the officials. So. That goes off to all of them. So when you get a bad decision, mate. 
There's no bad decisions, just bad shots. I don't know. If you ask Lee Candle, he said that recently at the tour, I gave him the first decision in about 15 years, I think he said. <laughs> Been, he's never. I've never been one of his favourites. <laughs> anyway, back to the action here. I don't understand that shot at all. Uh, too dangerous. Yeah. Again, it just looks like he's trying to force the game here. I think if he could, if he just settled down and just and just waited, you know, and bide his time and took his chances, he could have been out of sight here. But I think he's just gone a little bit. You know, gun go at it sometimes. Yeah, he's just pulling the trigger a bit early in a few frames. And look, that shot, that shot was there, but you, you had to punch it to get the red that wide. Otherwise, it was always going to go where it went. <coughs> well, that's not uh, that's not real flashy. You can you can play the plan here. Should be able to play the plane, no drama, and clear the reds. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, that was one ball he probably wouldn't have wanted to force at all, right in the back cushion. But now it's gone, so. Caught it first. That's a fair shot. Mm. Should run him out from here, though. Yeah, I was going to say. I think he's opened that up now because uh, he can take the red across, the yellow across the table. Now the plant. And if he gets out into the middle of the table, which, well, he didn't even have to play the plant. He went clean again. Yeah. But, uh, You'll probably take that one now. When he just nudged to the side, tampering the other one, so. It's, doesn't matter too much, he's got the yellow over the hole, so. It's not ideal. Yeah, I always feel that if you don't need to move a ball, run into a ball like that, you shouldn't be doing, you know, it, it just causes you just that little bit more grief. I mean that ball was in a perfectly good position. Yeah. And there was knocked in like you say, he still got the ball over the pocket and, and that but the, the cut was pretty fine. I think he's probably yeah. trying to come out around it. Yeah. Well if he's covered the red it's a very good shot. Just play the red into the black, try and put the black around the other side of it, come off the cushion and snook of it. Mm -hmm. I have no idea what he's doing. Did I miss something? Did he have two shots? He, he must have been a foul. The shot that Michael played, we I, I honestly thought he had flicked the red so did I. as he went past and got the yellow, but obviously he hadn't done. So I don't really understand the shot he played. To no. develop the blackout because he hit it way too hard. Yeah. That yellow next to the red should be okay. here mm -hmm. just don't go too far anywhere in the middle of the table is fine yeah that's all he had to do well really out of nowhere here Nigel Clark has now put himself in control of this match. It certainly didn't look like it in the early stages, but that's a great finish. Thank you. Yeah. And he's now leading by six frames to five in this race to ten.
So, frame 12, As we see the break off overhead again. Open the table. Nothing down. Yeah. So, good chance for Nigel. <coughs> Very good chance. Yeah, I think this is something that Mikhail talked about when I was talking to him earlier on about the break. It's massive in this, on this table. You know, if you if you don't make a ball, generally the balls have split well. You know, you're in trouble straight away. Just starting to feel like Michael's missed too many opportunities. Mm. And uh, because of that, he's really allowed Nigel to start to get into the match. Yeah, I say he was still struggling at the interval. Interval, but from since the interval, he's. Uh, start to get into this game and, and to be fair like I said earlier whichever player gets through here they're going to have to up the game a little bit tomorrow night's final oh, without a doubt I mean that was you know, almost flawless pull from uh, well both of them were very good but Nick was, <coughs> was super but, uh, now just taking, a, just taking a good yellow into the middle there because that was the one awkward one on this finish now pretty much everything else is straightforward. Just got to hold his nerve. Drop the one bottom right, yeah, and he's got the one into the middle. The other two at his mercy. Still got a few options with the black. Yeah, you see, there's some concerned faces there. It's on the Michael Hope side of the uh, arena. Yep. And Nigel was. Uh, I was talking to Nigel before and said I didn't see over the weekend. He said no, I actually went home after he'd got through because it was his birthday. So uh, he's hoping maybe for a late birthday present from Michael Hope here. <laughs> and what a present it'd be, a place in the world final. Absolutely. Certainly something he probably never really thought about at the start of the week when he came into the event last week. and. Uh, uh, there's definitely only uh, a handful of players who can expect to be to come this far in the tournament. There's been a few birthdays. I've played uh, my first round match of the of the Worlds. I played Sean Sharkey and we both had a birthday the following day. Oh, a little celebration then for one of you afterwards. Yeah, well, it wasn't for him. <laughs> well, that's okay. I've uh, I've had a lot more birthdays than him. Yeah, it's unfortunate. The Irish have uh, not really shown their true worth at these championships. They, they went out of the team event in the group stage. Oh, it's a mistake there from Nigel. He's just sneaked past. Left himself a shot. But it's not easy, this. Oh, this is tough. He's got almost a full pocket. And he's got to hold the white to probably play the black in the right middle, so... No, he's no, got he's the hold of that pocket. That's a great a shot. That's a superb oh. shot. This is a fantastic finish from Nigel Clark. This has really come out of nowhere. You know, since the interview, he does look to be queuing a lot better. Down goes the black, and it's now seven for five. Nigel Clark in a race to ten for a place in the world final.
So frame 13, it's Nigel Clark to break. He's just reeled off uh, four frames in a row. Five, three down. Just seven, five up. Oh, he's lost the white though on the break. And that's unfortunate. That just takes all the momentum out. You see there, Mick Hill. He's sat in the audience yeah, looking gas, on. And Gus to Giorgio. Yeah. Teen Wolf. Here he is, pool player alive. Yeah. Well, Mick Hill's already booked his place in the final. He's obviously interested in who he'll be playing. <clears throat> Well, I don't think there'd be too much out there at the moment that'd be making him terribly nervous. Nigel's just starting to show what he's capable of. I think, I think Mick's one of those players though. He knows that <clears throat> on a different day, you know, a player can be, come out and be completely different. So he, he won't read too much into this. Well, it's funny you say that. When I spoke to him earlier, he, uh, he said he's not nervous at all with the Cousins match because he, he's not playing someone who you don't know what to expect from him. He, he knows exactly what he's going to get. And against other players, like these two in particular, you, uh, you're not sure what you're going to get. On. It's, you could get anything on that day, so. Yeah. It's a really important frame now though for uh, Michael. Left himself with really nothing at all to do. Red ball He's a little close to that red. Could well be a scrappy frame here. Mind you, if he's on this one in the middle, I'm not sure. I'm not sure that he is. Most of the reds look on. Mm. <coughs> yeah, I think you might just bump this one out because that yellow and the black and the red are pretty much tied up. Like you said, the red goes. Oh, I thought he might just bump that out a little bit further. I, I actually thought he might go up and down the table and play those two, play the one on the cushion on the right hand side. With no yellows on from that side of the table. Yeah. So. And you're a good chance of getting the snooger. Yeah, because Michael's now blocked that red off. <coughs> He's just buying himself a little bit of time here. Again, there might be an option to develop those two if he gets the, the opportunity with the two reds on the right hand corner pocket. Pots the one uh, nearest to the rail first. And now there's just options to take one of them up there. Nice pace, just hanging out there. Hasn't left a lot. Still got that trouble yellow here. When the game's turned, he's uh, early. It was Michael asking the questions of Nigel. It seems to be the other way around. I'll leave you this and see what you can do with him. Seems to have tightened up a little bit. Mm. Yeah, the sort of shots we were seeing from Niger earlier on, and now transferred to Michael Hope's arm. It's a funny game. Mm. Yeah, Nigel's looking more relaxed around the table. Yeah, I was just thinking that. I say he didn't look relaxed, and he, did, he said he didn't feel relaxed at the yeah. interval. Maybe that interval's just come at the right time for him. He, he's still right in the match at 5 4. <clears throat> and, and as just you know, taking the advice, maybe supporters have had a word and said, look, you know, just just be yourself, you know, play your natural game. Just forget what's around you. Just concentrate on that 
eight by four surface and that's all you've got to think about. Which of course is all those things are much easier said than done. Oh, without a doubt. You know, it's far easier to say that here in the commentary box than, than do it out there. But that's what uh, that's what he needs to do. Oh, he's a bit unlucky there. Yes, he got as he got all the way through there and not hit a ball. That's ridiculous. Yeah. Just a little bit deceptive there. That gap. I think we've seen that a couple of times in this bottom rail. That <clears throat> it's looked like there's been no gap at all or virtually nothing. Yeah. And we've seen balls potted into the corner pocket. You know, well, how's that got in there? So. <laughs> well, we're wondering what they were trying to get on. Mm. Well, they can have a dip here. Trying to play that cushion yellow, or we're just happy getting it out. I think he was just looking to get it out. I think while that yellow is still tied up with with the black and the red, yeah, I think he was just and and the yellow up the table is not ideal either, you know, because it's it's sort of been tucked against the the boat rail rather than out in the open. Just cut this back in. Probably would have liked to go under that. There's still, still a chance here. Do you know what? He has got. A, if, if he's feeling brave, he's got a chance here. Maybe he's got the angle that yeah. yellow. Take <laughs> it top left and run into the black. Just a small shot. The red. And hope you don't stick to it. <clears throat> yeah. I'm not quite sure he's got the angle. Or he's a bit straight on it for that. Yeah. Go in the middle. Needs just to get up. I'm not going to have a lot of angle here. Mm. Again, he's, he's putting himself in a little bit of trouble here with that. Uh, well, he, well, he's just looking there. That uh, the yellow actually goes right middle. Well, he might be able to force this down, punch it off one or. Well, probably too quick. No, he's going to screw. So he's going to stun straight down the table. Oh, he's gone too far. <laughs> well, Nigel played a fantastic plant before, and this one will be better. Mm -hmm. Might have to take it up the top. Pretty scary shot. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, that's enormous. Super shot there. A little, just saw a little tap there of the, yeah. from uh, Nigel appreciating that. Good shot it was. Especially in the, in the context of the match. Yeah. You miss that and you're pretty much. Yeah, staring down the barrel of 8 5. Eight five so. World semi final. Not to mention you've dropped what four or five frames in a row. Yeah. Well, this is to stop the rot, having lost four on the spin. Stop the rot and have a break. Now the eight's down. Right. Now eight, seven, five, sorry, seven, six. Nigel Clark.
think we saw just at the last end of the last frame, Nigel's just slipped out for a, a break. So we'll be back with the action shortly. Just a reminder, streaming for the rest of the day. At six o'clock, we're due to have the first of the uh, semi-finals. And then uh, nine o'clock this evening, for that first semi-final, Scotland-Wales. And then nine o'clock, England-Malta. And that is bound to have some atmosphere when the Maltese guys start going. The zigger zagger zigger zaggers. They'll be raising the roof in the Imperial. And then tomorrow we've got the uh, men's team final at 11. Ladies individual final. final. Emma Wilkinson, Amy Bochy, Beecham at 2 o'clock. And then the winner of this match meets Mick Hill for the title of world champion. And that's at 5 o'clock tomorrow afternoon. So frame 13, Michael hope to break. Just stop the rot a little bit in that last frame. Break cues out. All the power, but he's lost the cue ball, top left. <clears throat> so, super chance now for Nigel Clark to take a further lead in this match and really put a stranglehold. Good spread to Good spread, made a ball and uh, just lost the white. Another opportunity to get a two frame lead here. The yellows look pretty good. Obviously, Peter, you played at the top level. Is it something that you've ever employed a break cue? Is that something you've used? And why, why would you, you know, why would you maybe go to using one? I did start using one at one stage, and uh, for no other reason than I didn't want to keep smashing up my tip. I got sick of changing it all the time, so. I, uh, yeah, I grabbed a slightly, uh, still a light cue, but a stiffer shaft and a uh, rock hard tip on it. And yeah, it's, uh, there's a bit of value in it, but I think um, oh, look, a lot of it's in your head too, but it, I just found it annoying swapping cues all the time, so I don't bother anymore. Yeah, I think over the years we've seen quite a lot of the top players experiment with break cues. And uh, ultimately you all seem to go back to the just playing with a normal cue all the time. Yeah. No, it's like different in the American game when the white ball weighs about three kilo. But I don't think it really is necessary in this, and unless you play with, you know, an eight mil tip, it can be uh, it can be a bit easier to spray the white ball. But Super shot there from Nigel Clark, middle pocket out to Jack up on the rail. And he's a nice little nudge on the red. He's got this yellow along the bottom rail. To be honest, these are all here now. Michael Hope's got to be feeling the pressure now. Just a little bit of navigating to do here. Make sure he gets the right angle on the two that are close together. Well, well let's know whether that goes. It's an interesting it's shot. Very, very tight. You see there, he's looking to just he probably just goes in off the uh, the right knuckle as we look. I don't know. Yeah. In at the middle of the hole. It's uh, hard to get your head around that one. Well, I do know on Friday I've got an optician's appointment, so uh, maybe it's long overdue. Yeah, maybe, I'll, <laughs> maybe I'll join you. <laughs> but this is a super performance in this frame from Nigel Clark. Probably just screw straight back to hopefully a couple of inches past where he is now. and. Uh, mm. Just queuing okay. Yeah, could have just been a little bit easier, but as you say, he's, oh, he's fine there. And, and to be honest, this is the Nigel Clark that people that know him will say this is Nigel Clark. That's a great finish. And now he leads by eight frames to six in a race to ten.
Nigel Clark to break. Lady Wyatt frames to six. I'm running. So frame 15, Nigel Clark to break. Needs just two more frames for a place in this year's world final. Where the machine Mick Hill awaits. He's been a little bit unlucky there. It was a red that jawed right into the middle pocket and stayed up. Open table. Just what Michael Hope wanted. Yeah, that last frame. Early, early chance to fire back. Should have a starter in the middle, possibly the one down over his corner. Yeah, hopefully Nigel just stays focused and uh, doesn't start thinking about the line and, and what's actually at stake here. One thing to make the semis and another thing entirely to be playing Mick Hill in the final of the world title. Yeah. Lovely shot. Great shot there from Michael Hope just shows his, his queuing's not gone. I just think some of his thinking at times just been a little awry, if you like. Just needs to try and keep it a bit more simple, I think. Try, not try and take them on if they're not there. I almost need to cut this ball down the right rail. Second. Oh, he's going down the left. What's he got after it, though? He plays a dead weight. Mm. So the red next to the yellow around the black spot area, that's... Looks like that'll go in this corner if that red's cleared or in the left middle. And that's the only tricky one, really. Yeah. Like I say, quite a bit of navigating to with all the balls are in this half of the table. Could possibly leave the one on the left rail to last. To see which way he goes here. Yeah. He's got the option. Oh, he's going down that left hand rail now. Just dragging a little bit aside. Yeah, and that's all. That is a fantastic pot. He's up high enough for the other one, I think. Should be fine. Yeah. Could be looking to swing across here. Um, Mr. Black, and he's got the red into the uh, left hand middle. Yeah. And that gives him that red, like you say, it goes this bottom right once this first red's been removed. So uh... just a just a bit of a feel shot here. Just got to time it nicely, not overheat it. Yeah. So steady the ship here from Michael Hope. He could even play into the yellow. No, he's well. He's still there. This is tricky though. He's almost got a cannon into the yellow here. Yeah, he's got to because. I think if he doesn't, he goes too far up and, and can't see the one bottom right then. Not only that, you wanted, you really wanted to be pretty straight on your last red so you can stay, you know, within reason of not having to cut the black, overcut it. Ooh, has he got it? Has he just drifted on? I think it just drifted a little bit on the nap. Might have turned on the nap. Just yeah. turned on the nap. Which sometimes you'll see happen. People say, "Oh, it's rolled," but it's actually the nap of the table's just taking it. Yeah. A little bit unlucky there, but he's had to play it like that because. If he hits it too firm, he doesn't get on his last ball. Yeah, well, I mean, you've really got to aim at the inside, uh, the outside jaw on those ones. So. Taking the double on straight away. No, yeah, just safety. Just oh, safety. It's not quite good enough. Ooh, he's probably just got that. Probably just got it. You can probably get around it easy enough, though. Mm. He can get around it, and then he's got to uh, hopefully land dead centre of the table and have any chance of cutting that red across. Just roll up off and play it off one cush. 
Oh, at least a nap because it'll go straight in. Oh. Which is probably what's happened. Yeah. Same thing again. Well, unlucky once. Twice in a row. I think it's a bit careless, to be honest. Yeah. Just a little bit careless. Yeah, and that just seems to have what crept, crept into his game again since the interval. So, looking like 9-6 to Nigel Clark. And I've got to admit, after about the first three or four frames, I didn't think we'd be saying that Absolutely towards the not. back end of this match. No. It's showing, uh, showing real character yeah. for him. Yeah, it's showing some great maturity here. And, and he, he, it's almost like he's grown into the into the match. Absolutely. You know, grown into, you know, we talked about not having the experience. He's gaining that experience and he seems to be learning from it. Yeah, I'm very impressed. Yeah. They look completely look like a fish out of water in the, the first eight or nine frames. Yeah. And I think with, one respect, I, with, without any disrespect to Michael, I think it's good that he's played somebody like Mike. If he'd have been playing a Mick Hill or a Phil Harrison or Lee Kendall, he'd have been dead in the water. It never got out of the blocks. Never got going. And, and that's happened to a few people over the years. We've seen it happen to. They've got onto the bigger table, struggled to get going in the in the early part of the match, and been destroyed by people. Yeah. And uh, but he's fortunate. Say it's been two in effect, two inexperienced players at this level, and and he's adapted. You know, the better of the two. Still some way to go yet, though, in this match. Still in this frame. How yeah, straight is he on this? Well, the yellow looks like it's off the cushion. But... Yeah. Uh, he's got to be careful he doesn't just uh, I was going to say he didn't land on the black but he's, he's up to punch it through that's a good shot there. it's a really good shot there from Nigel showing some confidence now as well yeah it's a very confident shot yeah even though he had two so 9-6 it will be to Nigel Clark this yeah. is um, I mean, can't say how uh, can't say enough how good this is to see. No. Great performance there. Now just one frame away from that place in the world final. So, frame 16, Michael Hope breaking off, Open table. once again, no friends at the table. Jeez, that's, how unlucky has he been there? Yeah, I mean that red's hung in the jaw, in fact two it's two reds, you can see the first one there, Nigel was stood in front of it, and this oh, is an absolutely it. superb opportunity for Nigel, Nigel Clark. Well, this is I mean, he couldn't have asked for a better chance for 10-6 and, and a place in that world final. No, I don't think, you know, where can these possibly go wrong? Well, I think the only way this can go wrong is between Nigel's ears and, and start thinking about what's at stake here. He just needs to think about um, these next six, seven balls and just stroke them home as if he was on the practice table. Dead easy to say here. I mean, the, the beauty of this is he had two awkward balls, one's on the bottom cushion, yeah. which goes, which you've got two balls sitting over the hole that means yeah. you can't miss it, and the other tricky ball, he was fat on at the start. Yeah. It's as good as it gets. Yeah. The uh, resignation on Michael's face at the moment, I would imagine. Hmm. 
He's going to have to take the one over the pocket now again. I'm sure you he would wanted to have done that. Because obviously yeah. he's going to have to take the left hand one. I don't think he thought that one through. Yeah. Just wonder, just because yeah. he played a plant now, yeah, left hand so. corner. The only danger that is, and he's going to have to play that one again and get out for the red because obviously the black is goes bottom left, and that yellow's in there fairly close. So he's got to get through that gap of the the yellow and the black. And you see there from that angle, that is a. In fact, I don't think it goes through there. Jeez, he's played that one. He's played that one. He's had a little bit of run because the ball's actually come back off that knuckle. So he's hit it. Yeah, he's hit it well enough for it to stay straight. Yeah. It's, yeah. Actually, does he give himself a chance by taking the, the red? He's taking the red in the middle, and screwing back here. So two balls away from a place in the world final. Nigel Clark just done it there. Played in the middle. Yeah, I say. He knew exactly what he was doing. Little little bounce off one cushion. Oh, I to come Just out a little inch or could two. have done with that another couple of inches out. Yeah, we'll bag him in. Real test of cue in here. Oh, oh, oh it's wow. Jord! It's Jord! He's stayed out. Oh, he's hit that very carefully. No. So Michael Holt must have been sat in the chair thinking he was out. He was heading home, but he's not. I feel a snooker coming on. Just want to be a bit careful with this so he doesn't kill both of those yellows. Yeah, I think that's what he's just, just thought about there. Mm. He does that. Yeah, that's a far better shot. Total yeah, the, to play the other one was easier to get right on him as well, but you're pushing it straight onto the other yellow, so yeah. not a productive shot at all. Mm -hmm. Just wondering, is he looking at playing the, the yellow onto the black and just and push the black up towards that top pocket a little bit? Yeah. Pretty good pace. <laughs> He'll have a go at these for sure, though. Really, you can clear everything except for those two. Yeah, because I just <clears throat> just wonder if the those two yellows, the right hand one, whether it squeezes off the cushion past the black. Yeah, I mean, even if it doesn't go in, you yeah. still open it up. Yeah, exactly, open anyway. it up. And yeah. So, what might have been for Nigel Clark just a few seconds ago, he's got to sit and wait for another opportunity. Said. Yeah, that was a good angle for it. And no real damage done. Just play that yellow up this corner, the left bottom left corner. Or just kick him out and bottom more. Yeah, super pot there from Michael Hope. It's good that he's still playing confident. Yeah, I think, well, this is the way he plays, you know, I mean, this is his game. Yeah. You know, I don't think he's over comfortable with the tactical side and whatever. Let's take this now because it's a shot that I think you've got a chance you do miss it. I just nudge this past the black and fatten the one in the middle. No, I don't, no, I don't, I don't agree with this. Me neither. Because if it goes wrong on that last yellow, Hang on, I was going to say yeah, he's double doubling it, it across. Yeah. I'm going to say if, he's, if he was playing the shot top right, he's still still not awesome for the double. Could have come a bit further. Yeah, sensible there, sensible play. I don't think he'd be trying to drop this in dead weight <laughs> off the knuckle. No chance. No. <laughs> it's 
So one match point saved by Michael Hogue, but it's still 9-7 to Nigel Clark in this race to 10. Frame 17, Nigel Clark, Clark breaks off, nearly loses the cue ball in the middle pocket. A little bit fortunate. He's got a red. three minutes without thinking about the black he just missed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you got to wonder, is that going to affect him, that missed black in the last frame? Must have had one eye on tomorrow night's final. He's, oh, he's not on, is he on this? No, I don't think he is. Oh, he, he is, bottom left, but I'm not sure that was what he was playing for. He's got it. Nice recovery. Yeah, great recovery there from Nigel Clark. I think if Mick Hill's still in the crowd and he's only watched the second half of this match, he's got to be thinking, if oh, Nigel Clark gets through to this, I could have a real battle on my hands. Absolutely. And he's not seen that first part of the match when he's struggling. You see, there is, yeah, Mick's still looking on. He's still interested to see who's going to uh, look on. Maybe uh, playing. He's gone the aggressive route there, Nigel. But, uh, it's like he's took the black up with the two reds. I don't think that was really necessary either. I'm pretty sure that ball was on in the <coughs> left corner. Now it's tough to hold for these bottom two, so we'll have to play for the middle pocket, I think, and then get back down. He seemed to make the hand gesture as if he's, I don't know, he was trying to pot it, he hasn't yeah. done, but he's had a result, because if he had a potted it, he'd have been in some uh -huh. trouble. No, he's caught it much too thick, the ball mm. would have gone, what would have gone wider and he would have had a shot to the to the top left, uh, mm. top right corner. So there's that touching ball, referee, Colin just checking. Touching ball, turn running. Touching ball. May not be. Touching ball, you'd probably just play off the cushion, come back and try and touch the black, wouldn't you? Leave him in there. Yeah, is he just, I don't know, is he just looking where, I'm saying try and hide it, but hide him so he can't see a yellow to pot up the table, but I don't see where he can do that. Yeah, it's definitely touching ball. But is he going to leave this yellow on? Is he going to leave that plant? I think he has done. Yeah, definitely. That's that's a very strange shot. 
because no matter where, he, he'd have played that another foot further over. He was still going to leave that yellow. Mind you, he does have to play this with a bit of pace or he's going to be on nothing. Yeah. So he's still got to... But he's le he seems to have yes. left him on the angle where he runs straight through the gap between the black and red. Mm. Right where he's pointing. And to be fair, it's a massive gamble at 9-7 in a world semi-final. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> oh, ho, ho. that has come out absolutely perfect for Nigel really Clark. Right. He's had the kiss, a little bit of run, the black's freed up. Now, he's just got to hold himself together for four more shots. In this opening shot's not easy, the plant. It's not right in the jaw, so he's got to get this right. He's going to be fed on the black too. It's an ideal ball to get on the black with snap. Yeah. You'll leave yourself about five degrees of angle is about all you'd want there. Yeah. So once again, Nigel Clark, right on the precipice of being in a world final. Hasn't left himself queuing over the ball, has he? Yeah, a little bit. Just a little bit awkward. He's got not got to do anything with it. Just drop it in. As you said, just about perfect. The only thing else you could want is your hand on the table, but yeah. this is uh, about as good as it's going to get. Yeah, This black, left centre, down it goes! And Nigel Clark wins by 10 frames to 7 and books his place in tomorrow night's World Final where he'll meet Mick Hill. Great performance there from Nigel Clark. As you say, Mick Hill's looked on and he knows who he'll play. So join us once again in a few minutes where we'll be starting the World Team semi-finals in the men's event. Thank you very much and see you soon.